Don't you know you're not supposed to wear white after Labor Day? Ugh. What's up, squad? This is Adam Pecora here. Thanks for tuning in. Welcome to Requiem for a Tuesday. Back at it once again. If I sound sick, it's just allergies. Wink. (laughs) Uh, But it is, and it's annoying. The itchiness. And people say, oh, Adam, why don't you go get allergy medication? I say to you, why don't you give me money? Oh, I think you understand why I don't have any now. So there you go. I'd rather spend my money on good things like drugs and booze, not medicine. Waste of money. (laughs) I once had somebody tell me, you shouldn't tell your doctor you smoke because your insurance will go up. And it's like, well, do you know what doctors are for? (laughs) Because... I mean, it just doesn't doesn't add up there to not report the truth to the guy who's trying to keep you alive. Or gal. Or gal. Just not in my case. I it's too it's weird enough. I, I'm not comfortable with doctors. I'm not like, you know, fondle these balls freely or whatever. I don't want to show them anything. I don't want to take my shirt off. I don't want to do any of that. <laughs> what a start to the show. I don't know. <laughs> don't know how that ended up happening. But, you know, it is what it is. You live and you learn. You laugh and you love. <laughs> Pluggy plugs, first thing. Not not first anymore, but second thing. Rate, review, subscribe. To Requiem for a Tuesday. On Apple, on Spotify, on Google, on Stitcher, on uh, YouTube. There's a YouTube channel. Yeah, some extras on there. Just literally just two. So you got to kind of look for them. Uh, But yeah, subscribe across the platforms. You know, give me a little give me a little star rating. I was going to say give me five stars, but you know what? Telling people to give you five stars is one disingenuous because it's supposed to be a review and a reflection of your performance give me five stars that already knocks you a half a star because you asked means you need it it's desperate it's gross i'm not a fan of it but give me five stars i do that on everything uh (laughs) multiplex uh, you know what? We're technically making the announcement tomorrow when this comes out and in two days as of this recording. So I'm just going to say first announcement officially multiplex new album October 8th. So basically one month from now as of the release 2021, the album will be called Google, not The search engine, although, you know, wait till you see the cover. It's a parody. But the number, so G-O-O-G-O-L, 17 tracks. It's absolutely nuts. Great production. Shout out to Lena Sutter up in Eucla, Wisconsin. And uh, it's, it's great. It's everything we've always wanted our sound to be and all that jazz. Uh, it's a romping good time. Uh, so more more details to come, but it, it's coming. Um, we're working on getting it like pre-savable. A lot harder than you'd think. You think you just click a button, but apparently that's not the case. We're either way. There will be plenty of links to it, including through this podcast. You already can get to all that. As I'm sure you know, through the links below, there is eventually a multiplex link tree 
We also have an Instagram. It's all linked together. Okay. It's all linked together. Check it all out. And, uh, you can, you can also get there through my Instagram at Adam.Rfat. Easiest thing to find. I got them tagged. I got my link tree, which is the main link tree, which is linked below and does all the stuff. So check everything out. I got solo music as well, but that's back burner right now. Multiplex coming soon. Uh, can't wait for people to hear it. It's absolutely nuts. Uh, I guess it's also good that I brought that up just because they're probably, probably, most likely will be no episode next week. You boys got a busy sketch. Just kidding, but not really. Uh, I got Pitchfork coming. That's three days of my life where I won't really be doing anything or be on. Yeah, like I'll be outside all day watching music, obviously. So, won't really be available to make this happen. We'll see, you know, if enough interesting things occur in the outside world. May, may have to hop on, do emergency style, fit it in. But uh, kind of want to just, you know, take a little week off. So, there's the, there's the announcement there. The album will be dropping in a month. No new episode next week barring wild circumstances and yeah it's the busiest time i've ever had <laughs> the last uh as far as like the past year goes i guess i have plans officially for two weeks in a row and it is exhausting and this is only the first week so in a miraculous event on saturday night Went and saw a screening of Twin Peaks Firewalk with me. A uh, a polarizing film. At least at its release, I think now people kind of get it. Um, when I got into Twin Peaks, when did I get into Twin Peaks? Like, I don't know, early high school maybe. I want to say could have been later easily, but in the teens, I was. When I first tried to watch the movie, I thought it was her awful, like just dog shit. Now, I hadn't seen, I want to say, any David Lynch movie at all up to that point. Like, Twin Peaks was my first foray into my guy. I, I think so. Yeah, that sounds right. So... The movie comes, and I'm, you know, like, what the hell? Which I think was the reaction from any, like, fans of the show. I don't know about critics. I think critics were just like, all right, come on, dude. But, yeah, I don't know. It initially comes off as, like, pretty pretentious, I want to say. And also just, like, incoherent. Which, at this point in time, I will also clarify, doesn't even make sense. Like, I don't know how I ever thought that. The pretentiousness, I guess, I could still see. But... I think it makes total sense now, which is weird, but <laughs> especially given that the return has happened as well, you know, it's just a whole hodgepodge of knowledge. So it's impossible for me to be fresh minded with it anymore. But I, I would call I would call the movie a masterpiece. I think it's I think it's incredible. Uh, very unique. I mean, every David Lynch movie is super unique, I guess, except for Dune, really. But I guess even in that sense, I don't know. I can't really compare it to much. <clears throat> I don't know. A anyway, big David Lynch stan. So this was a great thing. So the screening was happening. There was also a and a after the film with Dana Ashbrook and Shirley, a.k.a. one Bobby Briggs and the Laura Palmer herself. Now, I will say Cheryl Lee's performance in Firewalk With Me is in my top three performances by anyone male or female or you know whatever or andy circus uh <laughs> anyone has ever given like the, of, of what i've seen you know i can't i can't really say all time and mean it you know what i mean it's like you can say that within like the nfl or the nba you could basically have seen all of it 
at least enough. You know? I don't know. I guess that that's not really a fair point either. But there's enough, you know, whatever. <laughs> it's more objective, I, I guess. Lose, rough point, Adam. You lose that one. I'm sipping a yerb. It's bright and early, so... Once that kicks in, you know the drill. Motor mouth is coming. Don't worry. Your favorite. Uh, but yeah, I mean, she absolutely crushes it. The amount of guttural screaming she has to do is pretty impressive. Alone. Uh, but no, she just has to do everything. It's great. Uh, I don't even know what else to say. Like, the... There's not really any 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 flaws I can point out there, especially because Twin Peaks had already rooted itself in like a campy soap opera eat thing, which basically perfects itself, or I I don't know how to word this, but it basically like allows its self protection from acting criticism because it's like well it's supposed to be over the top. So it's like, even if the actors are bad, which a lot of them are, looking at you, James Hurley, you know it. We all know it. The worst. Uh, it's protected because you can easily say, well, yeah, like that's the point. That's the tone. And it's just, it's easy. But I, I, I don't know. I think she absolutely crushes it. Like the fear and just the... You, you don't for a second think that that isn't Laura Palmer somehow, even in this like surreal ass world with all this shit going on. It's like, damn, this chick's life is terrible. I feel so bad for her. <laughs> Somebody help her, please. Looking at you, McLaughlin. Um, and, you know, Bobby Briggs. What, what can you say? I'm going to turn it upside down. He has <laughs> he has one of the greatest arcs in the series because he's kind of just an antagonist in the pilot, but then you're like, oh, wait, he's cool, and then he's helping Shelly, but then he does more shady shit, and then you watch the movie, and it's like, oh, he did kill a guy, but then like it's like he was kind of doing it in self-defense. You know, and it's like, well, he's like selling cocaine. But also, like, who's he selling cocaine to? You know, that part's never really clear. I guess it could be anybody. It could just be at school, but whatever. And so it's like, okay, he's a mean. He's mean to Garland, which how could you be mean to Garland? One of the greatest saints to have ever graced us as a father on screen, dare I say. He was just looking out for everybody, especially his own. What if love is not enough? You know? It scares me too. Shout out to Major Garland. But yeah, so then and then Bobby eventually gets his moments as a police officer in season three and you know, fucking Shelly two times him. I guess they're already separated, but still, just the pain is it in his eyes is brutal, absolutely brutal to watch. Fuck you, Shelly. I can't believe it. He rescued you from Leo Johnson. Anyway, <laughs> it's absolutely unforgivable. God damn it. God, what a great show. <laughs> I fucking love this shit. Somebody buy me the return on Blu-ray. Thanks. <laughs> and then there's, of course, and then, like, if you haven't seen it, there's also a great episode of Psych. That's a Twin Peaks parody episode called Dual Spires. They really did a great job, pulled out a lot of stops. Both Dana and Cheryl are in it. As well as men, there are many other cameos. There's a reference to something like every second in the episode. It's really, really good. I've watched it multiple times. And I don't even think Psych is that good of a show. It's very average. It's very like, 
I, I could watch this coming down on acid where it's like I'm not going to sleep, but I'm not really going to be awake so we can have this on. It's a good show for that. Like you watch it for like nine hours. But, you know, is it like can't wait for another one? Let's run it back. You know, not really. Not for me. I'd rather watch Monk. I always watched Monk. It was good. Shout out Tony Shaloub. What was I talking about? <laughs> yeah, watch Dual Spires. Um, so anyway, they do a QA and a after. I, I, you know, you always like are trying to think of questions because it's like, oh, maybe I'll come up with one that I know is good. So then I'll go up and ask. But it's just like no matter what, what's the point? You know, you're, you never really get the answer you think you're going to get because... You, you're ba- especially in a situation like this, like you're asking the characters questions. Like you're not really asking the actors things, no matter how much you try to word it. And these motherfuckers coming up like, "Oh, the reason why I'm in film school is because of Twin Peaks," and they're like, "Yeah, sick, dude. <laughs> you're gonna be the next David Lynch. Good luck." You know, uh, like they're gonna be like, "Yeah." cool let me see your work but i can't wait to star in one of your movies because you came to this thing that you're paying me money for you know what i mean it's just weird nobody cares that you're in fucking film school make a movie you know i'm just saying god damn and then after the q a thing you know, they kind of brought people in little by little, little meet and greet, photo op. Both people were incredibly cool. I was beyond nervous. And it's like, what am I going to say? What am I going to say? And then it's like, well, they're meeting like a thousand people tonight, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> you know, don't slip up and be like crazy. You just don't want to stand out. I mean, like, that's the thing. Everybody wants to stand out, but you're never going to stand out in a positive way. It's, it's hard to come by. There was one time, uh, I'll never forget this. I'm still a little embarrassed by it, but it's also kind of just like, I'm also pretty indifferent and like whatever about it because I've realized it doesn't matter ultimately. And it's also just kind of a funny story. So if there wasn't comedy involved, I probably uh, would be a lot more infinitely embarrassed. But Deacon of Animal Collective was playing. He was like opening for somebody, which is crazy that he would need to open for somebody. An empty bottle. Uh, I used to live, you know, about a mile from there, roughly. So we would walk if we ever needed to go to a show there. goes without saying. Which is nice because it's real easy to pregame at your house. And then it's a short walk there. It's like... What a what a what a money and time saver just all around. It's great. So I'm hammered. He's outside, you know, doing whatever. As small venue people tend to be, you know, fluctuating around the room and stuff. I just lose it. I'm like, I I can't not say something because if I don't say something, then that'll eat me alive. So I just kind of yell, I'm like, take it. I came up and I, I just fanned out. I was like, you're the man. I love you guys. I've seen you so many times. And he's like, yeah, dude, uh, thanks. You know, whatever. I remember at one point I was like, man, just like, you're the shit, you know? And he was like, yeah, you're cool too. And I was like, oh no. Even, even then hammered out of my mind. When I heard him say that, I, I like almost was like throwing up, but like internally, it was just like, oh my god, he just roasted me so hard, and I just had to take it. This guy hates this so much. <laughs> He's afraid of me, potentially, right now. I don't know, but he was like, damn, I got fans? It was weird. So anyway, from my point is, I don't want to do that again. You know, 
you feel a little shy, you feel a little awkward, whatever. They, they're they aware of that one, and they're not going to care if you're just like, hey, you know, like, oh, you know. Dan Ashbrook, I will say, was very open and talkative, and he got me talking to him. It was very impressive. Hell of a nice guy. Dana Ashbrook, if you end up somehow listening to this at some point, hope your fantasy draft went well. My number one guy was Devontae Adams. You know, I never get running backs, ever. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if I'll ever win a fantasy league again. <laughs> it's tragic, but it's true. Um, but yeah, hell of a guy. And I mean, Shirley, what can I say? I mean, just like looking her in the eyes, I was like, hi, uh, (laughs) you know, I, I don't really remember what I said. I kind of blacked out the whole moment and I was just like, it's so great to meet you. It's so great to meet you. And she's like, yeah, thanks buddy. And then, you know, we hit a pick. What a, what a sweetheart. Uh, you know, I mean, Laura Palmer, what more can you say? The source of all goodness on earth. And the muse for some of the greatest television ever made. I mean, what a moment. What a moment. So much so that I spent almost half an episode talking about it. Didn't even expect that to happen. Uh, But it was just great. And then next night, went out to the old wrestling match. The watering hole. Uh, I don't know. It's not the watering hole. I don't know what that even means. In correlation... But uh, AEW, not, n- here's the thing, not a big wrestling guy anymore, more of a child thing. And it, it's a weird conflicting scenario where it's like, did I grow out of it or did it get bad like in reality or did I just grow out of it? Do you know what I'm saying? The truth is it used to be much better. I think almost every single person of any age group universally agrees on that. So... I guess it's not that conflicting of a thing. I guess I take that back. But so my point is just not that into it. Especially, you know, WWE is just for children. And I get it if you don't like wrestling at all. I I can understand why. You know, there are people who ruin it by viewing it as true competition. And people are like devastated by a win or loss. And it's just like, what? You know, it's indefensible. It's just, you know. But, I mean, you're also, like, reacting to a live television show. I could see how you could get swept up in it. So, maybe I take that back a little bit. You ever cry at a play? Hmm? As simple as that. Just think of that. Sorry people have emotions. No, but... You know, a lot of the a lot of the fans are insufferable. Anyway, AEW, a vast improvement. They're like, hey, how about we make wrestling like about wrestling? Because like you watch WWE, and it's like this is supposed to be like the best of the best, but it's like you can watch people like miss their cues and like not hit each other and just do like terrible clunky moves, and it's like you guys are using your best camera angles to like really sell these things, and they still look like really amateurish and bad and it's like i'm supposed to take this serious at any level just dropped a thing sorry it's just like no i i can't i can't because it's already such a ridiculous thing that like selling it is everything that's why the characters have to go so hard you have to be fully committed to all of it like in the ring, out of the ring, and if you're, and they're just not, they're just not. They just want to sell T-shirts and action figures, and it's not about talent, and that's a problem. 
Like, imagine if the NBA was just trying to sell you the NBA, like, NBA merch. And they weren't trying to, like, promote games or players. Like, they weren't, like, come see LeBron James. They were just like, tonight we have a basketball game. That's basically, like, how they're operating. It's kind of like UFC, but ineffective. Because UFC is, you know, thriving. UFC is a luxury where you can turn it in. I, I tune in every week, and I never know who's fighting. Like, even if I know who the fighters are, like, I don't know that they're fighting that week. And it's like, oh, what a nice surprise. I actually know somebody this week. And then if I don't know anybody, it's still like, well, I'm definitely still going to watch this entire thing. But, you know, my point in the comparison is like, oh, well, people are just anonymous. And it's like, I just like UFC. I like this promotion. They do a great job. Everything about it. And that's what WWE wants. They're not. You know. They're like a thin veil of the same thing. Just without any of the people involved being good. You know. I'm. There's a handful here and there. I'm sure. So anyway. Long story short. It was great to see. You know. Just a. Commitment to like. The actual dare I say, art form of wrestling and watch people like, you know, actually do real shit. Again, I know that it's not real, real, but you know what I mean. You can't fake gravity. You know? <laughs> there's <laughs> there's nothing secretive about that. No ifs, ands, or buts. So it was a great time. You know, we were in a suite. Shout out to Cousin Jeff, if you're listening. He's a radio man. Guess it runs in the family. No, I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't uh, try to claim any professionalism here. But uh, yeah, what a busy weekend. And then uh, I got Pitchfork next weekend. Like I said, it's just like, Jesus Christ. Look at me having things to do. Who would have thought? Who would have thought? It's uh, it's great to see someone finally like challenging the brass too. When you go unrivaled, th- that's also the reason like for the negligence and like you don't have to care. People don't have any other option. Like this is what they got. So I feel like it just allows. I don't know, poor execution. It's almost, it's like what's happening with ESPN. Like ESPN is a horrific channel. But like, what app am I going to use to get scores and like news from? You know, they have the best reporters working for them. They've got, you know, and they have deals with every league. So it's like, all of the functionality of like their app is going to be necessary. I'm sure there are other great apps for that. I've heard of some, you know, but whatever. It's just the easiest all in one for everything. And then ESPN Plus, you know, like I said, UFC, great. 30 for 30 is being available. That's cool, you know. But like, other than PTI, which has been awesome my entire life, <laughs> I've been watching it since I was like seven. That's still great, but it's like, you know, Sports Center is terrible. Everything is centered around all these take shows where it's like we're just inventing narratives and then arguing about them and it's just people screaming about and it's just like what is this? You know, there used to be shows where guys would sit around and just like talk about why baseball is declining and it's like this is boring as all hell but there were people who were fucking sitting on the edge of their seat like yes this is exactly for me this is just what i want and they would have that there would be a show for every sport and every league and you know what i mean you would get to know all the people on it. nfl live used to be great trey wingo mark schlereth and ever, I'm sure every single generation thinks whoever they grew up watching on there were the best people at it. I'm just saying, like, 
it has gone so far to the wayside where they're, they're just getting rid of everybody with skill. I mean, and does it make sense? Like, why wouldn't you want the best people? But nobody could step up and try to do that, you know? Even if FS1 or NFL Network or whatever, like, they have their own shows that are on the same slot, whatever. Like, ESPN is not losing the market share, like, because they'll always have live shit on. So, like, if some other channel, like, cool, you have good talk shows and stuff, but, like, are you going to take over? Are you going to be viewed on as the same level? It's just it's just not going to happen. I don't think. I mean, it would be great, but, like, you're going to come at Mickey? It's tough. You know, the mouse don't play. But my point was, in contrast, it's just, like, AEW in wrestling is challenging that. So that's cool. It's just good to see things being shaken up because the fans were nuts. Those motherfuckers were crazy hype about that event. It was absurd. Honestly, like, at a, like, sold-out wrestling thing, you will see crazier fans there than at any other type of event. And it doesn't really make sense. Like, I'm sitting there like, why is everybody losing their minds like this? You know... Maybe if they handed out IQ tests at the ticket thing, you could you could see some kind of data that would correlate. If you know what I'm saying, that would be a guess. You know, definitely if you did like the. <laughs> I can't even say it. <laughs> if you did like a BMI. <laughs> For everybody that went into, like, I think you'd kind of get, I think you'd be skewing in one direction, you know, but either way, the people are absolutely rabid, so it's still just a crazy environment to be in. It's like, it's like being at a playoff game every time. It's pretty wild. So it's good to see. That happening just just in general. You you love you love a good I guess that's the capitalist in me. Nothing like competition. <laughs> Rest in peace ECW, the only wrestling that ever mattered. Truly. Truly the best. Nothing like incredibly graphic violence. <laughs> it was the best. I loved it. Anyway. Moving on. As I mentioned last week, coming soon, going to have a Halloween special. I'm going to be going through. I'm, I'm waiting on some shipments. But I'm going to go through like the first three originals. Probably going to watch H2O too, just to kind of see what they did there. I've never seen it entirely. I, I don't think I'm going to like it from what I remember, <laughs> but that's fine. I'm going to rewatch the zombie Halloweens, even though I remember the second one as being like atrociously bad, like unwatchable bad, but we'll see. Um, And see, it would be cool to have that line up with the release of Halloween Kills, so I might shelve it. For that. Um, Because this all came about because I had watched. The new Halloween. Which is also just called. this. uh, You can't reboot it twice. Because. Whatever I can just say Halloween 2018 I guess. Wow they should have called it that. Because it rhymes. The title should be Halloween 2018. Especially because it's retconning the original. It's set 40 years later. I mean, come on, guys. Was this a, was this a discussion three years ago? I mean, I'm three years late to seeing the movie. So, like, were, we, were people talking about this? <laughs> Welcome to my take. Right now. Um, anyway, I'm not, I'm not going to spoil any of the stuff. 
going into that because I I already have a bunch of thoughts like just on that, just on the mess of canon. It's very it's very frustrating for me. But uh Halloween 2018 was a great movie. Well, like half of it was great. I'll get into it. I'll get into it. I'm going to save it. I'm going to save it. But the trailer for the new one looks awesome. So that's what led me down this whole path. So watch for that. Coming soon. But possibly not for like a month when that other movie comes out. (laughs) So we'll see. We'll see. Uh, But building the hype. Building the tension. You know. It's still just very interesting to me that Danny McBride is the writer of that. You know, it's it's not shocking that David Gordon Green... I, I mean, I guess initially I would have been... I, I thought it was, like, strange also that he's directing because he's, he's, like, known for comedy work. But it's just, like, he's a good, really good director. So it's, like, I guess that's less surprising. I guess it's kind of like the way Adam McKay has just like transcended. Like he's the anchor man guy, you know. All and then all of a sudden he's winning an Oscar and now he's just like elite. It's very interesting the way Hollywood has skewed. I don't know. Uh, I feel like it's not talked about enough the way that like Jordan Peele and Adam McKay are like the kings of Hollywood. How did that how did that happen? I love it, but how did that happen? I still think Jordan Peele's movie is going to suck. I think he kind of sucks. I hated us so much. That movie was so bad. Come on. <laughs> Come on. We'll see. I hope not though. Oh boy. What else is happening? Should we do another little news segment? Let's open let's open the news app. Let's see what we got. What can we Taliban? Uh, probably skip that one. <laughs> Gavin Newsom. Uh, gross. Doesn't deserve it. He should absolutely not have that job. Hot take. Lil Uzi Vert's $24 million diamond ripped out of his head at Rolling Loud. Um, You know, you shouldn't have a diamond in your head. I will say this. If I ever need a tooth removed or, you know, crowned or whatever the things are that happen, I will request a gold tooth. Mark my words. Just because, like, why wouldn't you? You know what I mean? You spend a couple extra hundred bucks. And you got gold. It's just sick. You know what I mean? You're just worth more. (laughs) Right away. But I don't know if I would go with uh, implant a diamond into me. Other than, you know, my mouth is my point. Don't implant jewelry into me unless it's a hole in my gums. But also, I I remember reading that he took it out before that already. Anyway, probably due to infection. So maybe they got it put back put back in after. I don't know. Uh, that sucks. Don't spend twenty four million dollars on one diamond, or on multiple diamonds either, unless that's an investment of some kind. I just disagree with all of it. So. I don't know. Oh, wait. Okay, I'm clicking on the article here. So that's why it was missing. He didn't take it out. It had gotten ripped out. I thought Rolling Loud was the festival that had happened recently, like over the weekend or something. But no. He said it was in July. They just ripped it out of his head. 
He did not lose it. So. What what a what a just massively misleading headline. That's actually just not a story at all. He's like, yeah, it got knocked out when I jumped into the crowd. No shit, dude. Like, what did you think? <laughs> your body's not going to like, it's not going to fully just become a part of your body. If it's an exposed open hole, it could always come out. That's just so silly. That's number three on the top of my, br- that's the top of the top five stories on earth right now. They gave me that. Okay. Well, glad you're doing all right, Uzi. You dumbass. <laughs> it also said, I've been paying for it since 2017. It's like, dude, <laughs> we get a house? I don't know. <laughs> you shouldn't need to be paying off. Uh, never mind. Whatever. What a lifestyle, I guess. Congrats. That you could do that, I suppose. My initial thoughts, too, were like, imagine ripping that out of his head, like trying to pocket it and just being like, like, what could you ever do with it? You know, it's got to be a very much one of a kind thing. I don't think that uh, you'd be able to get 24 mil for that. You'd be, you'd be lucky to get like a couple hundred K from some guy who could try to move it, but. All right, let's see. This is more in line with what I was expecting. Boy, four, meaning four years old, shot in head visiting Chicago amid Labor Day weekend bloodbath. So, that's fun. 46 hurt and three killed this weekend. Honestly, like, as bad as this sounds, that's a very, those are low numbers. Now, that's a lot of injuries, 46 people hurt. That means there's a lot of attempted murders, for sure. So, like, that's horrific. It's horrific either way. That sounds bad. (laughs) But you know what I'm trying to say. Is that uh, technically, I'm just saying, like, last weekend it was, like, 16. It was horrific. It was, it's it's just unbelievable, and it just and that's it. They just keep reporting it. It just keeps getting reported, and nobody really, nobody really says or does anything. It's uh absolutely tragic. I don't know why. <laughs> Welcome to my comedy show, Jesus Christ! I, I thought that the news thing would be funny. Here we go. This is more of what I was looking for. This is an article by Mashed, so you know it's high quality. What will probably happen? So already, not a lot of confidence in what they're writing. They can't even give a headline that's like, this is this is real. <laughs> what will probably happen if you use a fake name at Chick-fil-A? Sounds completely fucking stupid to begin with. Like, what could this ever be about? People, the some of the things that I see that are like attempting to be clickbait. I mean, like this. I'm just doing. I'm only clicking on this for the show, but it's like this. Like, wants to be clickbait, but it's so. Fu- Who cares what will probably happen if you use a fake name at Chick Fil? I'm like, ooh, what? probably might happen (laughs) it's like oh okay uh so basically they're like uh starbucks spells people's names wrong on purpose so do some other places they list some other things um yeah so when it comes to Chick-fil-A, a company notorious for going above and beyond, what to the point? Uh, what is the protocol for names people suspect might be fake? What? Hold on. This is so fucking stupid. Okay. So 
But that was one of the most embarrassing and painful things I have ever had to read. That was so fucking stupid. It was like, well, we went to Reddit and got to the bottom of this. And they're like, <laughs> first of all, the fact that people are on Reddit and they're like, who works at Chick-fil-A? I must know this. <laughs> Is just, it just hurts me inside. That, <laughs> like, somebody got paid money and they work a job and they put out an article that is about what if somebody gives a fake name for their Chick-fil-A order? What do you mean what if? There is no what if. Who gives a fuck? What are they checking your fucking ID? No. And that's exactly what the article says. Somebody's like, well, what if, what if I came to Chick-fil-A and said my name was Batman? What would you guys do? What would you guys do about that? And they're like, <laughs> the response was, we have a customer who goes by Batman. We love Batman. And it's like, what? Okay, that's, you should get some help for that guy. But, yeah, who gives a fuck? Why, why would they care? What like just under what circumstances do you think like Chick Fil A is an authority on what? I can't even put it into words. I'm just getting. I'm just boiling with rage at the idea that like there could have been any type of other information in there, and then it was just like if it's something we can't pronounce. Or something silly or whatever. If it's like a type thing, I guess. I don't really understand. Who cares? But they're like, we'll just put question marks and move on. Yes, that's the point. Regardless, they'll just move on. It's a fast food restaurant. Take your sandwich and go. What the fuck are we talking about here? <laughs> like, what if I put Elvis... Yeah, what if? What could possibly happen? They're like, you just picked the secret code word name. We're going to give you $10 million. Fuck. That made me so mad. I thought this was going to be a good day. Fuck that person. And fuck that article. Fuck everything about that. That was horrific. Ugh. What else we got? <laughs> God damn it. That was so awful. Royal aides are shocked by the sheer nerve of Prince Harry and Meghan Markle's recent offer to the Queen. Here's what I think about that. <laughs> Fuck them. Fuck those Brits. Go to England. Go to somewhere else. She's from here. I get it. But the idea that like, oh, we're going to leave the royal family to go to Hollywood. It's like, fuck you. She just manipulated him. That's what that made me think. Not that I give a fuck about him. He's a fucking loser Brit. You know, I hate him. <laughs> you, but you know what I mean? It's like, you're none of our business. You know, she fucking jumped ship. So I, I don't, you know what I mean? I don't care what Prince Harry thinks about anything. Fuck Prince Harry. Why are we calling him that anyway? His name is Harry here. Ain't no princes here. There's one prince, rest in peace, okay? And he's from Minnesota. You ever been to Minnesota, Prince Harry? I don't think so. So you can go fuck yourself. God damn it. <laughs> I lost 70 pounds. My favorite easy snacks for weight loss. In this picture, this chick's eating nachos. It looks like. Are those nachos? I don't know. Either way. Shut up. <laughs> oh, here's another great article from Mashed. 
40% agree this is the worst brand of mayonnaise? What if 60% of people agree it's a different one? Incomplete data. Anyway, the answer's gotta be Miracle Whip. Let's see. I'm gonna click on it. I'm, I'm feeling great about Mashed today. They're really crushing it. Yes, it is Miracle Whip, of course. Now, I'm pretty sure Miracle Whip isn't mayonnaise. And that's why, you know, people would consider it the worst mayo. It's not mayo. <laughs> so, <laughs> regardless, use Hellman's. It's the best. But to all my white people out there, you know. Howie Mandel's mental health crisis, quote, teetering on depression. Sounds like not a crisis at all. He's like, I'm almost sad. <laughs> Howie Mandel is like, holy shit, you guys. I was almost sad yesterday. We got to get on the news and, you know, get ahead of this. We got to figure this out. I felt bad for 10 minutes the other day. It was a nightmare. You'll never believe what I had to go through. <laughs> uh, dumb thing about vaccines. Nobody cares. COVID's over. It's been over. We don't talk about it anymore. <laughs> um, This sounds crazy. <laughs> Look. Video of sideline reporter eating a banana going viral. Why would that go viral? You can't eat a banana? Let's see. Let's take a look at this video. Okay, what the fuck? Honestly, uh, <laughs> that was a pretty crazy video. I'm shocked. This bitch... <laughs> so the article gave some context. I guess some guy in college football got caught eating a whole banana, peel included. And this chick's like, I'm doing it for content. And she's like, I'm going to take a bite of this banana through the peel. It looked like she almost threw up. Uh, it was just crazy. Why would you do that, lady? What it's like what could you gain? What are you gonna become an internet sensation because you ate a banana with the peel on? You know what I mean? It's just gross. You're just being gross. The fact that you said that it's for content, that's the problem. You have to pretend like, yeah, I'm gonna eat this banana. What's good? You know what I mean? You have to play it like like it's normal. You have to do it without mentioning that you're doing it, and then that's what makes it compelling. Somebody's like, hey, you want a banana? Yeah. And then you, they're like, catch. They throw it to you. Boom. You're like, sick. Thanks. I'm going to eat it right now. And then you just take a bite right out of it. And they're like, what the fuck? Like, you're a psychopath. And that's much more interesting. So you're welcome. Uh, ESPN, feel free to hire me. So. Uh, let's see. I think that's about all we got there. Oh, look at this. Mashed with another great headline. The best burger chain according to nearly 28% of people. <laughs> it's like, so not quite that many people like this place that much. But we wrote this anyway. <laughs> it's just like, okay. <laughs> Holy fuck, Mashed, officially the worst website of all time. Just cannot come up with any ideas about anything. Oh, I don't like this. Hold on, there's one more that I saw. Like, okay. This is just creepy. This article from something called Two Paragraphs, I don't know, it just showed up on Google News. Martin Scorsese's gorgeous daughter, 21, which, you know, that's an adult, I guess, technically, you know, but come on. I'm 26, and I think that this is gross. For a headline, especially, like, come on. Daughter, 21, stuns in lacy bras, quote, too hot to handle. Ugh. 
Don't write about Marty's daughter like that. That's disrespectful. No, I'm going to click on it. <laughs> Wait a second. Wait a second. Hold on. Ew. Wow, this is disgusting. This article is absolutely disgusting. It, like, talks about her as a child first for, like, context. It's like, yeah, you said that they're, that it's his daughter. So it's just weird. And then it just shows, like, her Instagram pics. And they're just, like, basic pictures. They're not, like, sexy pictures. So it's just extra gross. Uh, I'm very upset that that happened. <laughs> so we're definitely going to pivot away from the news app. Yikes. Marty, I'm sorry that you had to hear that. I know you're listening. I'm sorry that that had to happen in general. Okay? Two paragraphs, terrible publication confirmed. It's no mashed. I can tell you that much right now. Uh, I'm still uh trying to shake that off. What uh what a way to close out. <laughs> anyway, please, please, please keep a lookout for that multiplex record. I will definitely talk about it every episode leading up and after for a while. Uh, I'll be sure to link it straight up. Once it's there, or if we can get the pre-save thing up too, like that's a whole nother thing. There'll be more updates in that regard then. So we'll see. But yeah, record's coming soon. Can't wait for people to hear it. Ah, uh, shit fucking slaps, dog. Shit fucking slaps. Uh, there's two, well, there's really only one. There's a Twin Peaks tribute track on there. It's called Tulpa. Uh, there's a little interlude, like precursor to it too. That's technically for our man, Special Agent Chet Desmond. I will say, uh, I there I don't like that uh, Chris Isaac wasn't in the return at all. Definitely could have used a Chet Desmond loop around. I liked him. I'm a big Chet Desmond guy. It's a great name, also just in general. Uh, but, you know, it's okay. It's okay. David Lynch, you know, he did what he wanted. I still don't really know who Judy is. Just going to be honest. It's not easy for me to admit that, but it's tough. <laughs> We're not going to talk about Judy at all. I'm just saying, like, if you're going to bring David Bowie back, even though he's dead as a tea kettle, you can bring Chet Desmond back. You know, uh, Kiefer Sutherland, what, what was he doing in 2017? Was the 24 reboot happening? Did that happen? I don't know what's going on with that. I don't watch fucking 24. That's how I have my inner dialogues. I'm just like, you're a fucking idiot. No, you're a fucking idiot. And it's like, oh yeah, true. Just kind of move on. We. <laughs> Terrifying. Whew. All right, I got to get out of here. I'm going crazy. I think my dad's going crazy. <laughs> uh, rate, review, subscribe, Requiem for a Tuesday. Wherever books are sold. No, uh, wherever podcasts can be listened to. I got it everywhere. Check out the YouTube. Just because... <laughs> uh, the music, like I said, like I've been saying, all linked in the description below. Um, yeah, we gotta get we gotta get these numbies. We gotta keep them going. So spread the word, do your thing. Appreciate ya. We got the merch. Don't forget the merch. Rfat.bickertel.com. Uh, my Instagram is adam.rfat. If you are so inclined. And
And uh, I think that's it. Right? You know, if not, no worries, baby. I'll catch you next time. Uh, Again, if you're a live listener in the present day, there will probably not be an episode next week. So keep that in mind. I know you'll miss me. I will miss you. But first, I just want to remind you, I are fat. You are fat. We are fat. Calculator.